I almost got off with the world's briefest uh, presentation. <clears throat> and I, <laughs> I thank Bob <laughs> for, for that. Uh, I, uh, I got into physics a long time ago as a young kid. I really was curious about the world, and uh, I thought that science would be the way to get the answers. So I went to MIT and, and Princeton uh, thinking that uh, conventional physics was going to have a satisfying theory of the universe, and I kind of came away feeling that something was missing still. It didn't, it didn't seem uh, as though the, the basic deep questions all fit together very well. Um, uh, this is a book that uh, sort of summarizes my search to date, The Synchronized Universe, New Science of the Paranormal. Uh, what, um, what I found in the mid-80s is uh, a, a clue for what I was missing. Can everyone hear me in the back okay? Is this okay? Uh, I, I discovered remote viewing. And remote viewing, of course, allows you to, uh, to, to move in space and in time uh, far beyond what our conventional physics would allow uh, based on causality. So that was just, plus it doesn't weaken with, with distance, with the, the square of the distance like uh, the forces we know about do. So all of a sudden we had some major anomalies and I realized this was a clue for me that uh, maybe there were some things that I, the grad school had not uh, covered that I needed to look into. Uh, since that time a number of other anomalies have shown up in mainstream physics. Of course uh, physicists, uh, theorists are very quick to provide explanations for them, dark matter being one, but it was kind of an unexpected anomaly. Um, when I went to grad school in the gravity group at Princeton, no one talked about dark matter. Everyone thought that the Big Bang model was in pretty good shape in those days. Now we know there's a whole lot of extra stuff out there that was not included. Um, we're also seeing anomalies uh, in pendulum phenomena. This is the, the, the Maurice Allais experiments. Uh, Erwin Saxel and others have also duplicated this. When you have a pendulum swinging uh, and the Earth turns beneath it, there's a certain angular change the pendulum is supposed to undergo. But when a, um, a solar eclipse occurs, an anomaly happens. The angle veers off in many cases at a strange angle, suggesting that something is missing from our current gravity model. Uh, cold fusion, despite all the, the hoopla uh, after the 89 uh, announcements and the supposed failure to replicate at MIT and Princeton. We now know that the, that the uh, I'm sorry, MIT and Caltech, we now know that the MIT group uh, actually did get uh, excess energy, which they subtracted out in the final draft of their paper. And since then, over 500 labs around the world have replicated various aspects of cold fusion. Uh, we don't really have a theory, a satisfactory theory, for why it happens but there are a number of uh, very successful uh, experiments going on today in many labs around the world. Uh, charge clusters, one more anomaly that falls into current hard science. If you uh, create a spark in a vacuum chamber uh, and you produce a large number of electrons in a very small space, uh, if you make maybe 10 billion or so in a micron size sphere, anomalies start to show up that are not accounted for by current physics. They don't repel at enormous speeds the way they should. Instead, they tend to clump together. So when they hit a witness plate some distance away, the lower picture there shows the pattern that you get. Each dark spot is a charged cluster with billions of electrons, and these charged clusters themselves develop little magnetic fields, and they kind of link together like uh, pop beads on a necklace when they hit the witness plate. We think probably that at this density of charge, we're getting some zero-point vacuum anomalies that are not currently explained in current physics. But um, you know, it, it certainly is a, a, one, one more clue that our science does not have all the answers at the present time. When this charge cluster hits uh, a metal plate, you get a hole that drills into the plate uh, in the top picture here and it looks a lot like some kind of fusion or some kind of very strong melting is occurring uh, when the electrons hit the metal. In cosmology, there are also anomalies. This is a Halton Arp uh, uh, photograph of a, a fairly nearby 
uh, uh, a galaxy with um, jets that are, that are connected to three objects that are supposed to be, that are classified as quasars that should be much, much further away than the nearby object. And yet they have these jets connecting them. And he reasons from this that actually our whole idea of what a quasar is is wrong and that our whole idea of redshifts are missing something important. The speed of light, one more example, Raymond Chow and others, we've seen anomalies in the speed of light where we get faster than light propagation in some cases. What I want to talk about today are other types of phenomena that also give us hints about anomalies that might help us to construct a better theory of physics or help us to, get to guide us if we are missing things that need to be added. And of course, so the paranormal phenomena and UFOs are two anomalistic areas that um, are good guides to uh, provide clues for us. Um, so we can, we can look at what some of those experiments and incidents uh, teach us. I'm not trying to prove that either one exists today. That's a big subject that would be a much longer talk. Uh, some good references supporting each phenomena can be suggested for the paranormal. Uh, the psychic discoveries behind the Iron Curtain by Ostrander and Schroeder back in 1970 was one of the great uh, watershed books, Margins of Reality by Bob John and Brenda Dunn. Uh, Dean Radin's books, uh, Bill Tiller's books, uh, John McMonigle's books, and I'll put mine at the bottom there. I think I try to summarize these things, but there are many, many books that provide a good guide for those who are learning about the anomalies in the paranormal. And for UFOs, I would say Timothy Good's Above Top Secret was one of those great books in the late 80s that showed us there was some substance here that we weren't, we had not been seeing before. Uh, Michael Hesseman's uh, UFOs, The Secret History is a very thorough book about some of the evidence. Phil Corso's Day After Roswell, Ray Fowler's books, John Mack's books, and Willie Strieber's books all give different view views of this very complex and large subject. Um, some paranormal phenomena, as you know, have been demonstrated in the lab with good statistics. Uh, the Princeton Pear Lab, Dean Radin, Global Consciousness Project, with ESP, PK, and remote viewing, uh, now we can say have been established uh, with high probability in my mind. Some effects uh, are more spectacular and rare and more controversial, and they depend more on anecdotal evidence, levitation, teleportation, etc. <clears throat> this is a problem studying UFOs scientifically since you can't really control repeatability. It's, although it's desirable to have good statistics, uh, in science some events are rare and non-repeatable and yet we have to live with it if the event is spectacular enough. Uh, the Big Bang is one we're kind of stuck with. We, we get one you know, to study. Uh, the uh, first atomic bomb test was sufficient to convince the military that they were ready to go. Uh, the um, omega minus particles sort of, uh, Scotch to convince people that uh, SU-3, the Eightfold Way of Marie Goldman, was correct. So there are cases where a few examples have a lot of power. Um, it's not ideal, but it's what we have, we're stuck with, basically, until we have some better uh, data. Um, in case of UFOs, there are some really high credibility witnesses. So for people who have not looked into this subject or who are skeptics, it's worthwhile looking at what some pretty high credibility individuals have said about their existence. <clears throat> uh, it's time for the truth to be brought out. Behind the scenes, high-ranking Air Force officers are soberly concerned about UFOs. But through official secrecy, secrecy and ridicule, many citizens are led to believe the unknown objects are nonsense. And this is the former CIA director, uh, Vice Admiral Roscoe Hillencotter, in a statement to Congress. This flying saucer situation is not at all imaginary or seeing too much in some natural phenomena. Something is really flying around. The phenomenon is something real and not visionary or fictitious. General Nathan Twining, Chief of Staff, U.S. Air Force. <clears throat> More than 10,000 sightings have been reported, the majority of which cannot be accounted for by any scientific explanation. I am convinced that these objects do exist and that they are not manufactured by any nation, any nation on earth. 